Well, thank you. Thank you so much, and uh, good morning, everyone. It's great to be here with you. Um, I could not be really any more honored, excited, and just exceptionally proud to be named the 12th president of Maryville College. I'm immensely grateful for and sincerely humbled by the confidence and trust that the search committee and the board of directors has demonstrated in me. And for that vote of confidence, I want to offer a most sincere and heartfelt thank you to become a part of the Maryville College story, a story spanning over 200 years now, is such a tremendous honor. I want to begin by introducing uh, the people in the room who are the most important to me. Um, my wife, Sarah Coker, uh, seated on the front row, and then our three sons who I'll introduce in descending order of age and height. Um, <clears throat> there's Will, uh, there's Chris, and there's Andrew. Will is 15, Chris is 11, and Andrew is six. We also have a daughter, our firstborn, who was actually born in Knoxville in 2001. Her name is Caroline, and she is a first year student at college in Florida. I'm certain she is in class or studying intensely uh, right now. And uh, if you do the math, you're correct. We did have one start college and one start kindergarten this year. <laughs> So uh, to all of you here, uh, Maryville students, faculty, and staff, I'm keenly aware of the fact that the majority of you do not know me. Uh, for most of you, this is the first time you have ever even heard my name. Uh, and some of you are even perhaps Googling me uh, right now, or you, <laughs> you were a few minutes ago. It's Brian with a Y, um, and then Coker is C-O-K-E-R. <laughs> But seriously, I know how challenging a closed and confidential search can be from your perspective because I've been in your shoes before. Thankfully, you were represented in this process. I want to let you know you were represented exceptionally well uh, by an incredible presidential search committee. They impressed me from my very first interaction with them. I was struck by their authenticity, their genuineness, and their love for and dedication to this institution. But I want to be clear, they did not take it easy on me. Um, their questions were very good questions and hard questions, questions that showed me how much they cared for Maryville College and how seriously they were taking their roles as your representatives. And um, I want to, I'd like to give them a hand for their work, if we could, please. In thinking about what to share with you today, because there's no pressure here, right? Um, I had so many thoughts and ideas. Uh, I considered telling you some funny stories, uh, such as how I ate the same horrible pizza in the Charlotte airport on the way to my second interview here, as I had eaten while traveling to my first interview here, because I thought that perhaps that horrible pizza brought me luck the first time. <laughs> and well, I'm here, right? <laughs> Or I could tell you about this chocolate cookie that I really wanted to eat during my full day of interviews. This was the second round. But every time I remembered that I had that cookie, do you remember this? You do, yes. Uh, someone would ask me another question. And then I, of course, uh, couldn't ever eat the cookie. I even lost the cookie once or twice. I believe I accused Mary Kay of taking it from me um, at one point. Uh, but then we found it. Uh, but you know, I still never got to eat that cookie. Uh, I'm thinking it may still be over in the RT Lodge somewhere. If anyone finds it, let me know maybe. I don't, I don't know. It's been a couple of weeks. I also thought about sharing how these presidential search processes are in a way, bear with me, like being on one of those bachelor or bachelorette television shows. The search committee starts out with a large group of potential candidates. Then they narrow the group down. They spend quality time with each candidate. They determine if there's some chemistry, right? <laughs> Except instead of getting a rose, you hope to get another interview. And instead of getting a marriage proposal, you hope to get a job offer. And today, well, this is kind of like that episode where you're brought home to meet the family, right? <laughs> and you hope that this family perhaps likes and accepts you. After my first interview with the search committee, as the plane was ascending from the Knoxville airport, I took a picture of those great smoky mountains that I love so very much. And I prayed, man, I sure hope I'll be back. About 13 days later, I found myself ascending from the Knoxville airport again after my second interview, and this time Sarah was there with me. Uh, we held hands, and when speaking of this opportunity, said, we said, wow, this really seems right. 
and following that, we then began a waiting period of around 14 days, which were perhaps the absolute longest 14 days <laughs> of our married lives, until I got a most welcome phone call from Mary Kay last Friday, inviting me to be the 12th president of this amazing institution. Sarah and I could not be more excited to return to East Tennessee and to join this incredible community. For us, some of our very best memories are in this area. For us, this really is a homecoming. I've often said that East Tennesseans are some of the most kind, genuine giving, and authentic people I have ever encountered. For me, this almost 30-year journey in higher education all started as a small private Presbyterian residential liberal arts college on the other end of the volunteer state at Rhodes in Memphis. That transformative educational experience was the foundation of what has been my life's work and my passion. It also introduced me to Sarah. We actually met as juniors fulfilling our general education requirements in sociology. But in all seriousness, as I told the search committee within the first few minutes of my very first interview, I believe with all my heart that I would not have been there interviewing with them for a college presidency, and I certainly would not be here standing here today with you as Maryville's next president had it not been for that transformative liberal arts education. I owe so very much to that experience. The term liberal arts has become problematic in our society, as I know all of you know, frequently yet incorrectly linked to political ideology. But we know that that's not the liberal that we're talking about. The liberal arts are about liberation, liberation of the mind and of the heart. They're about becoming a free thinker, about developing the capacities to critically analyze, discern, and reflect. And I have seen firsthand the truly liberating power of the liberal arts. I have seen the liberating power of the liberal arts in Jessup, Maryland, at the men's and women's state correctional facilities. It is there at those facilities that the faculty of Goucher College, my current institution, teach courses, the same courses that they are currently teaching on our main campus. They teach them concurrently. They teach them to inmates who are also Goucher students enrolled in the Goucher Prison Education Partnership. It is in their, those classes there. It is there within those walls. It's there within the hearts and minds of those students where you will truly find the liberating power of the liberal arts. These are dynamic and largely unprecedented times for American higher education. And I believe, in fact, I know that Maryville College is well positioned and ready to truly thrive. The strategic plan sets forth a clear path for the future, and I am wholly comfortable with moving this plan forward. We will work to future proof the college, all while fully embracing the present. Your current president, Tom Bogart, and I exchanged emails this past weekend. He emailed first, sending the most kind and gracious message of congratulations. And in, our, and in our ensuing correspondence, I told Tom how very fortunate I was to be following him here at Maryville College. I know this college. I've watched and studied Maryville, and I know that President Bogart has successfully led this college through some quite turbulent times for American higher education. And because of that, we should all be very grateful to President Bogart. I know that I am, and I'd like to recognize that right now today. Thank you, allergy season. <laughs> I believe a Maryville College education in which you study everything so that you are prepared for anything is more relevant than ever before. Our world is rapidly changing every second. Even the very nature of knowledge and how it is acquired and transmitted, it has changed. Likewise, the students who we seek to serve are changing as well. As Mary Kay mentioned, I teach at the graduate level at Morgan State University, a public HBCU in Baltimore. And three, three days ago in my student development theory course, the students were sharing the stories of their own college experiences. And I was struck by the complexities of their individual journeys in higher education, as well as the challenges they had faced in pursuing their dreams. It was a needed reminder that our students' journeys are often multifaceted and circuitous. The path to your dreams is rarely linear and often quite messy, and that, my friends, is okay. Our world is also becoming more diverse every second, and I see tremendous beauty 
and richness in that diversity. I believe we all learn best when we're exposed to ideas other than our own ideas, and when that learning occurs in the presence of those with life stories that are different from our own life story. In higher education, we must acknowledge that our colleges and universities were not originally built and structured for the more diverse, the richly diverse student populations we serve today. In recent years, as you heard a bit about, my career has allowed me to take a deep dive, a personal journey, if you will, into matters of race, equity, and identity. And I'm a much better person for undertaking that journey. Rest assured, my commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion at Maryville will be bold, strong, and steadfast. At such a time of division in our nation and world, at a time when we are questioning the very concept of truth, Maryville's voluntary covenant with the Presbyterian Church USA is important and quite meaningful to me, especially as a lifelong Presbyterian. The college's faith and learning statement acknowledges the college's place in the perpetual search for truth, which is what we're all about in higher education. And it affirms the college's role in student spiritual, intellectual, and moral development. I often say that, it, that our most important responsibility at colleges like Maryville is to support students in finding their voices. Again, we support students in finding their voices. During very formative years, their voices for what they believe is true, right, and just in this world. You can expect me and my family to be a visible and engaged presence at Maryville, I thrive on the energy of campus life and believe so strongly that student learning and student development take place both inside and outside of our classrooms, laboratories, and studios. As someone whose career has been largely focused on the student experience and community life, I believe quite deeply in the value of learning on the athletic field, in late night residence hall conversations, in conversations with college staff members, and in those chats over lunch in the dining hall. I have long believed that Maryville deserves an even greater reputation than what you currently enjoy, and we must work to expand both the college's regional, national, and international reaches, spreading the incredible story of a Maryville education. The hidden gem that is Maryville College must be revealed because it's a beautiful gem that shines so brightly. Private institutions must increasingly operate in the public interest, I believe the opportunities for Maryville to do so are immense given this location in a thriving, scenic, and opportune region. And others are taking note of those opportunities for Maryville as well. As you know, just last week, the Carnegie Foundation announced our community engagement classification reflecting the institutional commitment to community engagement. We must embrace and connect with our surrounding communities and the region now more than ever before, seeking to partner, serve, and add value in new and innovative ways. Sarah and I believe in this college. As I said to Mary Kay just a few minutes after I was offered this position, Sarah and I have already decided and committed to giving generously to this institution. And I'm not talking about just our time and energy, though you're certainly going to get all of that. But in this case, I'm talking about our financial resources as well. And you can certainly count on us encouraging and inspiring many others to do just the same. I truly enjoy helping others connect their resources with their passions, and I believe there's a lot to be passionate about here at Maryville. Thus, please know that we will be working to aggressively and enthusiastically generate philanthropic support for Maryville College. As you know, the future of this amazing institution depends on it. A college president is ultimately the guardian of a sacred trust, serving as the steward of all that has come before and all that is still yet to come. I will be the president, but I will not be the presidency. Again, <laughs> I will be the president, but I will not be the presidency. Mark my words, we're going to accomplish great things in the coming years, but we will accomplish none of it in isolation. We will move forward as a community quite boldly, united and standing fundamentally true to our liberal arts identity and our mission to do good on the largest possible scale. My job is to ensure that this college, this institution which has stood as noble, grand, and true for over 200 years, continues to stand and thrive for many generations to come. Thank you so very much for this incredible opportunity. I simply could not be any more honored to be standing before you today. Our family is so excited and we can't wait to be here with you officially in July.
Thank you so much once again.